Alright folks, this port of catch is going to be totally different today. We're going to do it with jigs. Now in this video coming behind this, the fishing part, I fished with Sid's hand ties that, that uh, he ties and I sell here on my site. And I fished with some of mine that I tie that I don't sell on the site. Alright? Now, the reason I don't sell mine, because I'm a basic, uh, <laughs> I'm a basic jig tire guys. You're not going to see anything fancy here today. Promise you that. Okay? <laughs> But I, I've carried about 50 with me, and I used to fish with them a lot before I started making plastics. Before I made plastic, that was it. I fished with a couple companies' baits. I tried a lot of different companies' plastic. That's how I got into it. Two, two reasons I got into making plastic baits is I fished with a lot of companies' baits, and a lot of the colors were good. And Chuck sent me these plastics that he one time, a little pack of them, and I clobbered the crappy with them because it was colors that I hadn't ever seen before and the fish they had never seen, and body shapes. And I thought, there's something to this. So that I ordered a mold. I ordered the stinger mold first in the fluke. And it's grown. I don't have many molds I have now, about 40 or 50. Because I've got had to buy multiple molds by making baits and selling them. All right? And I'm constantly changing that too. Now, the first thing you do, let me show you, is you make a bed. You start your you start your wrapping. Why, why am I flopping here? All right. So, it's just tight right there. Anyway. We'll get back at it. So I hadn't used this thing for a long time. I made a video with y'all. If y'all remember, I made a video uh, a while back trying to jig, and that was it. Like, that's the first time I've used it for a long time. Now, I, what I'm going to show you is what works for me. Now, our lake right now is pretty well stained, and this is the way I, I do it. Okay? I cut it off. I like to leave these little ends. See how they feather to nothing? I tie what I call a... Uh, alter like jig or a feather jig a small jig see i'm going to measure it. i don't want it very long and i don't put a bunch but like that i measure it with my hands like that i'm going to cut the excess off on the table and see now i don't use that i throw it away that's just the way i tie now uh, i'm going to try to get this i'm going to spin this around so y'all can see what i'm doing hopefully all right doing this on camera guys is very hard so all right, I, I'm doing it loosely. Now I'm going to tighten it up. You do it loosely at first to get it where you want it. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more. I want a little bit more than that. Okay. Now, if, if I'm going to put a body on it, that's called Chan uh, Chanel. I got it right here. Okay. And I have multiple colors. I'll share that with you in a minute. Again, I'm going to marriage by what I want. I know by how long I want it now. Okay, I'm going to add another one. If I'm going to put a body on it, I want to pull it down more. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, this is going to be my tail. All right, now, I want, in my tail, I want more than white. I like to add chartreuse, moss, gray. Guys, and here's what I do a lot of times. I buy it in packs like this. Okay, the multicolor packs. Yeah, that way if I want to add some yellow, there's some green. I mean, I buy these a lot because, and if, look, if you're just getting into it, that's all you need to do. Buy you a pack of this, buy you a white one, buy a white tail. White's common, you'll use a lot. And buy you a little multi-pack. I have quite a few of these. So you can buy little pieces like this. You can get into this pretty pretty cheap. The most expensive part is the, this right here. You, and I bought, I bought mine as a kit. I got scissors. You got a whipping tool. Yeah, you got a whip it once in a while. Get a whipping tool, you get that. But you can buy one for $30, $40. This one was about 60 okay? And I have a cheaper one. My son has a little tiny cheap one that you clip on the table. He used to tie flies for sunfish all the time. All right, but look, let's add, I'm going to make this a light color one. I like shark trues in the tail or yellow, okay, either one, okay, or a bright yellow like that. So I got plenty, so that's yellow. So we're going to add just a pinch of this fluorescent yellow. I think that's what it's called. And see, I like fluorescent yellow. I like yellow jig heads. Y'all know that. And I think fluorescent yellow is a great color. My spark color is fluorescent yellow. It's just a little brighter. Somebody ordered spark today. I'm going to put this on one side like that. Somebody ordered spark uh, swim baits I sent out this morning. And then they ordered sunshine. And I know they're going to look at them and go like, well, there ain't much difference. It's not much difference, guys. The difference is one's fluorescent yellow and the chartreuse, is, of course, it's chartreuse. The sp spark is fluorescent yellow. H. 
got my finger on that thing, guys. So, all right, now what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm getting my bucktail where I want it. All right, I'm using this little. Get your bucktail how you want it. It moved just a little bit on me, and that's fine. That's not going to hurt nothing. Now, I'm going to take it back. Uh, but how far I want my Chanel to start? Right, right in there. I'm going to go back forward. I'm going to go back. Now, I got hair sticking everywhere. All right. I told you at the beginning. I'm going to cut this wild one. I'm not, I'm not a fancy tire. But uh, I, every once in a while, I'll stick a hair jig in a package. If somebody puts a big order in once in a while, like, you know, I get a lot of 70 to $100 orders. Somebody puts that in sometimes, I'll stick a hair jig in there. I done that to one fella, and he commented back to me. He said, "Man, I love that hair jig. <laughs> you got any more of them? Yeah. All right. Now look, this is a bright sharp truth. You can get this guys in all colors. It doesn't matter what color you can you imagine. Okay. There's. You go into Cabela's. Some of these came from Cabela's. Okay. Some of them came from Bass Pro Shop. You can go ahead and get by any color you can imagine. Okay. Now." Here's what I do. I take this, cut me a piece off, but this long, and I can make a couple jigs with that piece. And I'll use it till it's too small. I'd better do that, and I would spring that whole pack around there. All right? Now, I'm going to put this thing going forward, just like this, for two reasons. That gives me a bunch of tie on it, it won't come off. Guys, I've never had one come apart on me yet. I'm going to tie it there, and I'm going to take this all the way to the front. Okay, and I'm going to stop right there at the front and I'll pull it down out of the way. Now, I'm going to take this the opposite direction of my thread. And I'm going to, I'm putting it pretty tight. I'm not pulling hard as I can. You can see it moving there. And one thing I didn't bring out here with me is glue. What I like to do is uh, put one drop of glue, cement glue, right here. And then when I pull this down and tie it, it'll lock it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop it right there. <laughs> I carried everything up in my house, guys. I usually tie in my house. I wanted to do it in the shop because I have better light here. Let me stop and get my glue. All right, guys. I couldn't find my head glue. I think I threw it away. I think it dried up. I'm going to show you what most people use. This is Sally Hansen fingernail polish. This happened to have some flake in it, which I couldn't find. I usually have clear. You can use clear. All right. But it doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt anything, especially this, on the, this little tire. And what I'm doing is I'm going to put a little bit right there in that. I just put some right there in that spot where I want this to end, okay? And once that dries, let's go tie it down. Now, I'm going to go around that a couple times. I'm going to go on this back side of it. I'm holding it, this little tension on it. Trying to stay out of y'all's way. All right, I can do this. All right. I crossed over it's what I've done. See, I'm trying to tie it in. All right. Now, the glue is going to hold it. All right, and don't cut your thread when you do that. Been there, done that. Maybe somebody's thinking, well, Dennis, how do you know that? Because I've done it. <laughs> I bet you Sid can tell you he's done it too. He's, he ties thousands of jigs. He makes it look easy. All right. Oops. Now, what I'm doing now, this whipping tool makes circles. And then you pop the back off like that and you tie it down. Now, I'm going to snug it just a little bit like that. Now, some people will tie it two or three times. I'm depending on my glue to hold it. A side of hands and glue. Now, I'm gonna, right here where I just cut it, I'm going to put another little drop right there where I just cut it. It doesn't take much, guys. Just wet that thread with it. When that sets up, she's not going anywhere. Let me pop this thing out of here, which is not easy. Bam. All right. When this gets wet, that'll pull down. That's a touch long, and I usually make them, but it's fine. Okay, because these little ones, you can you can trim the little tail ends if you want to, like this little one. I, I like to leave them as much as I can because uh, it tapers down, a hair will taper down. It'll pull down like that. Usually I make them about that long. It's probably a quarter inch to a three-eighths of an inch longer than I like it. I'm just going to, okay. But I like that natural end. And what it does in the water is it pulsates. The jig, this part here will open up and shut, okay? All right. I got a little heavy on the end of it. I say, that's why I don't make them and sell them. But the fish, I promise you, the fish don't care, okay? I probably should have been one less wrap than I've done, but that's fine. Like I told you, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I'm not an expert. Now, 
That's kind. Of, that's how you make it if you use Chanel. And that's a good color for me all the way around. It's a chartreuse with some white and, and yellow or something like that in it. These are my jigs I'm using. This is a size 4. Okay, a lot of people use 2s. And I'm, I'm saying that. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to start making some videos. I'm going to do one today that I'm going to load on Saturdays. And they're going to be little shorts about baits, uh, about colors. And the one I'm going to do this today for Saturday, today's Thursday, is going to be about jigs and the size that matches jigs to the baits, okay? All right, guys, we're going to tie another one. We're going to tie another one that's just going to be bucktail, okay? So I'm going to make my bed here. I put my hook in upside down. You can do it either way. It's actually easier if you put it up. But I find it easier to get my hair where I want it, like that. All right, and I pre-cut me a little piece of hair here. And I'm going to try to put it... Let me bring my jig head out a little further. All right. This size 4 hook also is hard to tie because it's hard to get your fingers around it. Uh, a lot of y'all use 2s. I know that, size 2. And that's fine. All right. Uh, I got some hooks I use twos on, on some big baits, but a size two is, uh, is fine if you're tying all the body and everything on it, but like I, said, I usually I just tie a smaller jig. I know I was talking to somebody the other day and they go like, oh, I don't use anything that don't have at least a two on it. And I go, I very seldom use a size two hook. You set that little hook, a little four. That's usually what I use. My jigs are fours, sixes, and two, eights. Eights are for the little little guys. Okay? I'm trying to keep all my three at the head of it now. Now I'm going to flip it over. That's why I've done this. Because I want this color on top. Okay? Now, let me get rid of the white. This is gray. i got two colors I like putting on top. One is gray. The other one is moss. Okay? Which is this... Right. I got two mosses. One's darker than the other one, but it's just a just a olive green is basically what you want. I think they call it, and some of them, one of them they call it moss. It doesn't matter. It's just this sad green. Like all right, I want a good chunk of that, and I cut these off really close to the body, even though I don't use it all. That helps clean up your tail too, so you don't have a mess on there later on. All right, I'm gonna cut that off. Okay, I'm gonna add that. To that side of it, it's about to, probably need to cut just a touch more off of it, guys. I appreciate y'all watching my videos. Uh, I know y'all gonna laugh at this one, but I appreciate y'all watching my videos. I appreciate you guys that watch all the way through. Yeah, I'm, I mentioned this once in a while. It tells us how long most of you watch. The average person only watches six to eight minutes of any video, no matter whose it is, right? Now, you see the difference in my, this is yellow. I'm going to use the chartreuse this time. All right. Yellow's fine. I've used yellow and I've used chartreuse. It doesn't matter for, for this. I've done both. But here, what I'm doing is adding just a little bit of brightness to this one side here now. I'm going to cut off right there. And I have found on my lake, I live on Lake Gas, and you know, I hear the ducks down there this morning. There's a creek behind my house. I'm not waterfront. The house beside of me is waterfront. I'm one house from waterfront. Yeah, that only means about $400,000 difference, guys. Some of y'all live around the lakes, know what I'm saying. Waterfront's very expensive. All right. I don't, I don't need to be waterfront. I moved here with the idea of being waterfront, and uh, when I sold my house in Stanton, Virginia, and I moved here 22 years ago, I thought I would... Here's how I cut my thread. I thought I would live off water for a little bit and find me something on water. Once I lived here for a little bit, I realized I didn't need to be on the water. It was I'm right at now. This is tinsel. All I got all colors. Uh, this one right here is UV. Okay, I got blue. I got purple. Now usually I don't like this. Has some chartreuse in it. I use chartreuse a lot. I got gold. But I'm tying darker jig here. Chartreuse. I mean, you can get this by any color you can imagine, guys. I like this one right here. I use this. I use these two a lot. See this one changing colors? Yeah. Okay? It's kind of a green and changes colors. And I dropped the one I wanted to use. This is a UV color. It's supposed, to, it's supposed to shine. It's like me using my UV colors in the plastics. It'll stand out. 
I, I pull a piece out like this. Okay, it's got a crinkle in it. And I'll double it. And here's how I do it. I don't know how y'all do it. Just somebody will tell me the right way to do it. I hook it on the eye of the jig like that. That way I can hold on to it. And I wrap it a couple times. Now, I'm going to come back here about the length of the body. And I'm going to cut it off. Now, again, I said I got the scrap pieces. I'm going to take the two scrap pieces and I'm going to do it again. Oops. All right, the one's going to be a little too short. It's this one. Okay, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to do it again with this piece. Y'all see that shine? And I'm holding it down so I get on, hope it'll end up on the bottom. All right, pull it down the same way and cut it off. All right. Now that's going to, and you can add a, you can add multiple colors if you wanted to, guys. You, you can use any color you want. Here I go. I'm going to finish this thing, baby, off right here. Now I tie a lot of them like this right here. This is mostly how I tie my jigs. I use some Chanel like I showed you. This is probably my all-around best uh, performance jigs. Are the ones I just tied as hair. I use craft fur. In the video I showed, I made wall back. Bam! She's done right there like that. Okay. All right. And see, it's not real thick. It's not a lot of hair, but when it gets in the water, it'll pull down like this. And what does that look like to you? It looks like a little minute, doesn't it? See, it's got a little bit of brightness on the back. See how that moss kind of bled in with that chartreuse? Kind of, kind of gave it a green back, didn't it? To me, that's a minna. It looks like a little small minna in the water. A little flash for the scales. That says crappy snack, doesn't it? All right. Now, I'm going to sit here and tie up a few more of these. That's two. So I'll give you all some fresh ones. I got two more jig heads. All right, and I'm going to send you, so you're going to get about six of these, okay, for the, for the winter. Appreciate y'all guys. Thank y'all for watching. Leave your number, 1 through 400. Uh, Wednesday night, I do the draw sometime after 5, so leave it before 5 o'clock. If I'm home, I do it like quarter to 5. I was fishing this past Wednesday, and I didn't get home to 5 o'clock, so it was like 5, 30, quarter to 6 before I'd done it. And I, I, I'm still doing, I'm still recording myself doing that. I keep saying I'm going to do it live. Uh, but I've been talking to my son about it. We're going to come up with something. Uh, he kind of helps advise me some because that's what he does for a living. He's a graphic designer and works for, does commercials and stuff like that. Helps develop commercials and stuff. And so he's working around that type of stuff. And um, we've been talking about different ways to do it. I want to, when I, when I do it, I want it to work. I watch some of the guys live. I know that y'all watch. I see you on there. And they go for hours, hour and a half. I, I don't have that time. I'm either in the bait shop and at night I'm putting those baits in those bags that y'all buy. I sold 2,400 of them last year. The baits had to be in. I probably got 2,000 in stock in there right now. I bag almost every night. <laughs> I don't have time to sit and talk for an hour and a half on a live show. So uh, I, I, I'll come up with something, and uh, I'm not sure what it's going to be yet right now. I haven't made my decision yet. Uh, but as of now, I'm going to keep recording it on Wednesday night and placing it on Thursday morning, okay? Till I do different, that's what's going to happen. And then I'll contact you Wednesday night and say, hey, you won. And if you're ordering from me, I'll, I'll get your address. The guy that won this week, I went on the site this morning, found his address. Bam, it's on your way, buddy. Yep, um, Jesse won last week, so it's on his way to him. Uh, smelled it out this morning. I had to run to town this morning anyway, so it's on his way. If not, I usually go on Friday. Because my wife and I you know, uh, usually go out like Friday. Friday sometimes we go out for lunch which is right beside the post office. We usually run up to the Mexican restaurant and, uh, have, and I mail them then, okay? That's our Friday out together. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all. It's one number per person. You must be a subscriber, okay? The closest to the number without going over. You can't go over the number. That way we don't have somebody on both sides that going, that's mine, no, it's mine. Well, if you went over, you're out. That solved that problem, didn't it? Yeah, that's why we do that, guys. Uh, it's all in for fun. And if you win, skip a week or two. Get somebody else a chance to win. There's people that have never won. They've been leaving numbers for a couple of years. I think I've been doing this two years. And there's people who have won two or three times. Some of you just lucky. You know, I hope you're playing the lottery. Hey, guys, leave your number. I'll see y'all on Wednesday night. I hope you enjoyed the video after this. The fishing's been very tough here. Okay? Very tough. But I'm still catching fish. See ya. Bam. Well, <laughs> ain't what I was after, is it? <laughs> I tell you guys, I'm seeing a lot of fish, but uh, 
I think most of them is what they are right here. They are white perch. I think they're trying to spawn. Look, they're full of eggs, doesn't it? I think they're thinking about spawn. I think they spawn before the crappy do. See right here? I think that's what a lot of them are. Spot lock on. They don't feel like crappy. <laughs> nope. Alright, guys. Gosh, that's a big one, though. Second white perch. That's a big one. I'll tell you, the white perch, like I said, first one. I might show you all these. That's a monster. He's a good 13, 13 and a half inches. Look how thick he is. The white perch right now have taken over the lake. Bam. Guys, I've caught so many white perch today, I don't know what to think. The white perch, I think, are trying to spawn. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna net him. Look, he's hooked very good. I've only caught a few crappy, but bam! There you go. He's about right at ten inches. All right, this is on a Sid's hair jig. Uh, color's called canary. Cause it's green and yellow, kind of a yellowish tail, green metal, chartreuse head. There you go. Bam. Where are you going? Guys, I wouldn't hit him, but they're so hard to come by. I hate to lose him. <laughs> I'm seeing a few crap. I'm seeing more white perch on him than anything. And uh, there you go. We're the same size. Bam. Alright guys, what I done? You see I got my rod with two pound test. I switched to this rod because it has two pound test. That's one reason it falls. The bait falls a little better. This is a 1 16th ounce. Now, I switched jigs on y'all. I was using the SIDS and I was catching fish on it, but I had a lot of them following me. And I thought, let's go to a Let's go to one that has a little bit lighter color to it. And I didn't have many with me, but I had one, a couple of mine. I got a box of about 30 or 40 with, that I have a piece of styrofoam in, and I just got them stuck in. I've showed y'all before. Bam! And look at there. Look what I came up with. That's a nice crappie. Now, let's say this is one of my hair jigs. And, uh, bam. The reason I wanted to show that to y'all is it has, this is all bucktail, okay? It doesn't have any chenille like uh, said uses. I have good luck on this lake with this style uh, jig. Now, you see I've been catching them on his too, no problem. I've caught them in every color he sent me uh, that I have on the site. But I put a little bit of purple tinsel in it. It's got a little chartreuse on this side. This side has olive and it's white. Yep. That's my favorite color on this lake. I caught one the first cast just now with that. And that might, so somebody, that might not mean much, but I've been out here two or three hours and I've only caught, I think that makes seven fish. And I've caught none on plastic. <laughs> All right, so, and they're very spooky. Sometimes when I cast over there, my bait hits the water you hear a loon hollering right there now. And that's what I think they think it is. Sometimes when my bait hits the water, it makes a splash of it just hitting the water. And they're in 14, 15 foot. You see I'm in 17 foot? Like, see here? See how far I'm staying back from them? That's 50 foot. I'm staying just where I can cast to them, and that's it. That's all further I can cast this bait. I stop every once in a while and pull up, and it looks like they back up further, I think. But that's how touchy they are today. This time of year here, it gets like that. They get hard to find, right pre-spawn. They're moving a lot, and when you do find a few, you've, you're not going to get close to them. They're very spooky. The birds eating at them, diving past them, whatever. I don't, I don't know if they eat crappy, real big crappy. They're going to eat the small ones, ain't they? Uh, that doesn't help any either. All right, guys, bam. Oh, he's a stone of fit. He's mad. 
I love these light action rods, man, I tell you. This is a seven footer. This is a loose classic I bought last year. I just love it. It's one of my favorite rods because I like the cork handle. A couple people have asked me why I use it a lot. That's why it feels good in my hand. Now, the Danellis are nice, don't get me wrong. Oh, it's a white perch. All right, told y'all I've been catching a lot of white perch. I might leave him in this clip. <laughs> this is, I've been catching quite a few of them. And uh, let me get a hold of them here. They shut their mouth and throw these fins out. It's not a bad one. I had one that was probably 13, 13 and a half. He's probably, he's probably 11, 11 and a half. Bam. Wow. A white perch again. <laughs> oh, I can say they all look alike on them when they're running the bottom and Right now, the white perch are hanging off the bottom like crappy do. They're getting about a foot off the bottom. I think it's because they're trying to spawn. Like I said, I've caught a pile of them today. If I if I see them all come after my bait at the same time, they're the nice ones. If I see them all come after my bait at the same time, I reel it away from them. Let's see if this is a white perch. <laughs> no, it's a crappy. I'm going to tell you guys. Oops. I'm netting him. <laughs> Crappy are hard to come by. I'm seeing some I think are crappy. These were four by themselves. But I reel it past them. Like I said earlier, if they come up in a bunch at a time, I just go on one. I take it away from them. And uh, there was three or four in this group, and two of them come up, and I reel a little bit more than this, and this came up like he had to have it. And that's usually what a crappy does. All right, on the hair jig. Makes them look kind of bad when they, there you go. All right, that nice? All right, guys, look. What happens is when you're reeling this hair jig, it looks skinny in the water, it fluffs out, and as it moves in the water, it pulsates a little bit. It opens and closes with the hair. That's what makes it uh, a good bait. All right? All right, guys. Appreciate y'all. Let's see if uh, I'm going to catch one, another, maybe one more, and uh, we're going to do something with this video. Maybe we might turn it into something special.